So with the mind-body space and, you know, the TMS world, does structural damage, right, even tissue damage, does that qualify for the mind-body space methods or TMS, right? And for me, I would say, of course it does. Yes, right? And this is where, I, you know, unpopular opinion, I'm sure some people won't agree. Um, this is where I think the TMS world needs a bit of an update, right? Dr. Sonos, he was onto something. He was, the, you know, the OG, he's the man, right? He, he specialized in back pain, muscle pain, but I think it goes beyond that. I think it goes across the whole board. 99% of anything with to do with chronic illness, health, your physical body, your mental, your mental, physical mind, it's affected by the, the mind-body space, right? You can use the mind-body space to keep maintained, to keep healthy and thriving, and you can use it to get your health back, right, if you've been compromised. And I think at the end of the day, it's, it's about a spectrum, right? Or maybe like this, right? Where are you on the spectrum, right? And there's a certain threshold where, you know, TMS goes, hey, that's not me, man. You're, you're on your own, buddy. That's, uh, I'm topping out, right? And I, and I don't think that's how, how it is. I think it's, you know, you're a part of the spectrum. Either your symptoms are like, eh, right? And, you know, when they're easier like that, they're, they're easier to overcome and turn off alarms. But, you know, when you're up here, I don't know, right? When you're up here, higher in the spectrum, it's just more intense. It's just, right? And there's, it's real, right? The whole spectrum symptoms are real. They're really there. And it's easy for people to say, okay, now that's just hogwash. Now you're just being a hippie because seriously, no, this is real. There's no time for games. We ain't, we can't be playing around here. This is, you gotta, no, you gotta smarten up. You gotta wake up now. Okay. Playtime's over. Okay. This isn't a hippie, you know, hogwash, wishy-washy thing. You can't just think your way out of this. This is not just, you know, this is real. Right. But you know what? It's all real. Everything's real. Right. It's just, where are you on the spectrum? For me, I had 70 symptoms. So, you know, I was, it was severe. I was going through some real hell. 70, 70 fucking things, right? Somebody else might be dealing with four or three, and it's not always just a number, right? You could be dealing with two things, and it's just fucking destroying the world, right? It could be you could be just dealing with one thing, it could be just anxiety or just OCD, and that's just destroying the world. Compared to somebody who might be dealing with back pain, and you know, for them, that's their hell, right? And that that is structural. You actually you get you have inflammation, you have pain, you have tissue damage, you have these things really happen, right? At the end of the day, what it is, it's all about the loads and your baseline and alarms, right? Either it's your brain sending you alarms to perceive danger, right? Because it's your brain is an alarm system. Its job is to keep you alive, right? And the alarms manifest as symptoms because your baseline is at a thousand when normally it should be on standby, right? Your alarm system should be on standby looking for danger. So what happens usually is when you see a tiger, your baseline goes to a thousand, the tiger is dead, it goes back to zero, back to standby, right? But what happens is when, you know, we see a tiger and the tiger hangs out for four to 10 years, it's hanging on your back, your brain hardwires that there is a new program, the survival program to keep you alive. And that's what it's supposed to do. So what does it do? Right? When the tiger all of a sudden is gone, the real tiger is gone, the brain is still keeping that old program running. Because it's perceiving that there's still danger. We still got to keep them alive. You know what? We're going to throw on alarms and ask questions later. So in the case when you're, you know, in a survival state and your baseline's at a thousand, because you've, you're running that survival program, it manifests symptoms, right? To get your attention to the perceived danger, right? And these symptoms could be anything. And it gets your attention. It's working. It's doing its job. There's nothing wrong with you. The brain is doing its job very efficiently by getting your attention and it works, right? But we have to now reprogram the brain and let it know that we're not in a dangerous situation. There's no real danger here, right? The alarm system of your brain is supposed to be there to tell you when there's real danger. That's when you fight or, fight or flee. But when, when it's going, it's sending false alarms when there is no danger, right? That's when it sucks because you're constantly feeling 
alarms that we don't prefer. That's like constantly having to live with these fucking alarms going off in your apartment and you're just trying to eat pizza. It's like, fuck, there's no fire, right? The first two, the first eight fires were real, but we're now at the 200th time that you're going off and there's no fucking fire. I'm just cooking here, right? That's all, I'm just cooking, right? I just, I just took a shower and you're fucking ringing and it's fucking annoying. You know, I could, I could take the battery out or I could reprogram you, right? So you just reprogram it. You reprogram it by sitting in the danger. It's how you respond. If you want to send messages of safety, it's how you sit in the danger, right? You reprogram, you introduce a new program, you lead it, you lead into it, right? You're going to feel like shit while you're changing the, to the new program. To introduce a new program, you got to feel the old program, right? And you got to lead in the new one. So you're going to feel the old program. So you're going to feel like shit. When you open doors and expose yourself, right? And you bring things up and you turn off alarms, you're going to feel like shit. You're going to get triggered. And that's the point. These are opportunities. You need to have them to move forward, to change the program. Now, the other form of symptoms that I've noticed, it's loads. 747s that you're carrying, right? With anything, when you have these allostatic loads in your body, right? You're up to here. Things aren't going to work properly. You're buffering, right? You're like, all the systems in your body aren't working efficiently. It's not able to do what it's designed to do, right? It's getting in its own way because it's trying to keep you alive. And you've been dealing with pulling 747s through your whole life, right? Your, 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 your Honda Civic, your little hatchback is pulling a big fucking plane. And the tires are popping. You keep trying to replace the tires because you think it's the tires. Well, it's got to be the tires, right? When it's let go of that 747, release it. Right? Bring down your baseline, turn off alarms, and that that Honda Civic's gonna work amazing. It's gonna work back to factory settings. Just like you. It's like if you were to take your phone and you, all of a sudden storage is overloaded. You have too many pictures of pussy cats and fucking daffodils and, and butterflies. Right? So it's gonna start working slow, not efficient, right? So something's gotta give. Right? Things don't work right. So you have to take out, release some of the loads. This is what we do with our bodies, right? Your body won't be working efficiently. It's not absorbing the nutrients correctly and efficiently anymore, right? So you're going to have some of these symptoms pop up, right? The body keeps the score. Things will manifest. Something's got to give, right? It's underneath the, the, the water, barely making it. It's overwhelmed, right? The office desk, it's full of work, piled up files that it's got to go through and sort Plus, it's got to keep you alive. And then you're putting on more bullshit, right? Oh, we got a, we got a flu coming up. It's like, oh, fuck, I got to keep this fucking guy alive. And then I got to fucking process a flu and a virus and a blue, blue, blue. And a, you fucking name it, right? And plus, you're dealing with a stressful work environment, right? You're with a narcissist. Plus, you know, what else can we add on to the bullshit? And it's still keeping you alive. It's still doing its job. Right? And then we're bitching that, well, why am I getting all these symptoms? Well, something's got to give, right? Show it some respect. What do you expect, right? What, what, what are you going to expect when, you're, when your body is overwhelmed with all these loads? You're pulling 747s for all, all your... It's, but it's at the same time, it's not your fault. Yeah, I know. It's not your fault. But try to look at it that way. You've been through so much shit. Life's thrown you curveballs. You didn't know any better. You've been holding on to these loads. Right? You had that narcissistic boyfriend. You, you had that shitty job that underpaid you, overworked you, toxic work environment. Your boss is a dickhead. You know, some of your co-workers are backstabbers. Um, you had a bunch of surgeries. You had a bunch of... You had to take medications, right, that weren't fun. Um, you were on antibiotics. You had your 10 teeth pulled. You're you a smoker. You were a drinker for 20 years of your life. You're a binge drinker. You're, you know, you're all these things. Somebody passed away. That was really close to you. Two people, five people passed away in your life that were really close to you, right? You had a pet that passed away. Like all these things that affect you negatively, mentally or physically, add loads, right? And we, we weren't given a handbook. So we don't know how to process this stuff. We don't know how to feel our feelings. Instead, we, we push our feelings down, right? We get scared of our feelings. We avoid them. We distract. And what you distract, what you resist persists, right? And then we, we drink to numb our feelings, Right? That's what I did. I just like, fuck it. I don't want to deal. I don't have to deal with this. What for? I'll just ignore it. It'll go away. Right? If I don't look at it, if I don't see it, 
As far as I'm concerned, it's not there. You build more loads. Your fucking, your bucket gets fuller and fuller and fuller. Symptoms start to manifest around here. This is the threshold, right? And then it starts to overflow. And this is where you have the perfect storm. Your perfect shit storm, as I like to say, as I love to say. And you got alarms ringing, right? The brain's sending a, sending you the alarms to get your attention to perceived danger. Your, uh, your loads are at maximum. They're overflowing, right? So you got a, a fucking nuclear meltdown, right? Mayday, neat, 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 neat. You're freaking out. Right? This is this is what happens. This is how we get into dis-ease, right? We're not in the flow anymore. Things aren't working efficiently. Right? Everything's in a survival state. Everything's like <coughs> right? When you get a flu, you're processing it for three months. Right? When you're regulated, you barely feel a sniffle. If anything, it goes back into your nose. It goes steam. <coughs> Maybe a half hour, you might feel uh, the effects of a flu. Maybe. Because the body is able to work efficiently. All the systems in your body are in a flow state, right? Everything's just like, ee, right? Let's say there's a virus coming toward you. Bring it all. Let's see what we can do with this here. Ah, that was easy. What else you got? Nothing? Yeah, we're just chilling. We're on standby, right? We have no loads, right? And it, we do get loads coming in and out constantly, but it's like they're manageable, right? The body and the brain's able to work with ease, right? Because life keeps throwing us curveballs, right? It's going to keep going up and down, up and down right here. But when you're already starting in a state right here and you get throwing these massive fucking bowling balls, right? <laughs> Something's got to give. Body keeps the score, right? You're going to have a shit show party a shit show party where things just erupt and you're not working efficiently and you have you're chronically ill you're fucking you're sick right and it is structurally right this can affect you structurally tissue damage you know inflammation this stuff is real i had ulcerative colitis that's real shit all the autoimmune issues that people can get that's real shit it's just a spectrum where are you on the spectrum the severity of the, the, the symptoms is just how how bunged up are you with your with your loads? How how many are you carrying like a big fucking jumbo jet now? Right? Is your alarm system still bringing in that survival program? Is your baseline still at two thousand now? Do you have a thousand alarms that are on that you're not turning off? So this covers about 99% of all illnesses, diseases, syndromes, whatever, everything under the fucking moon, right? If it's something that, you know, you're not sick yet, but you can use these mind-body-space methods to keep you in tune, flowing so that the, this bucket's always reasonably in a, you know, a safe zone where you're, you're working efficiently, right? You're thriving, your baseline's at zero, even negative five even right? You're working efficiently. This is great. But if you're a person where you've been compromised because of life, because it threw you 18 curveballs or bowling balls, it's not too late. This is temporary. You can bring yourself back and reset your alarm system so that your body's able to do its job and catch up and all the homework and all the bullshit that it's not been able to do. It wasn't able to, to digest that burrito because it was too busy keeping you fucking safe and alive. So everything starts to get into balance. You're able to, to efficiently absorb nutrients. You feel better. Your mood changes, right? All the systems in your body are go going back online. That fatty liver starts to clear up, right? Because it's all sludgy because things started to build up, right? Because your, your body's lifting a massive mountain, right? And it's doing it. It's fucking doing it. But it's like, okay, fuck. Can we put this down now? Can we fucking just... All right, oh. <laughs> right? It's able to heal. Things that were, you know, not functioning properly that you didn't even know, your vision starts to clear up a bit, right? Digestion's like, you take nice fucking fatty shits. They're nice and big and fat and beautiful. Beautiful poops. You take nice, big, beautiful poops, right? Your brain fog is gone. Right? When you take a nap, you know, a half hour nap, when you wake up, you're not groggy for eight hours, right? 
right? When you when you do some sort of exertion, you're not fucking, you don't feel sick for the next two hours. When you, like all these things, you don't have candida anymore. You don't, right? Everything is working back to factory settings again. It's able to catch up, process things. Oh, look at this. Look at all this shit that he wasn't processing. Oh, look at that. Open that room up. Oh my goodness. Look at all those boxes. Look at all that piled bullshit. Now we can work on it. We had to avoid those rooms because we were too busy keeping you alive. Now we can start opening rooms. We'll get the broom, get the mob, clean that out. Okay, vacuum the floors. Did the, it's looked like a cat fucking shit all over the fucking carpet. It's piss everywhere. Now we gotta replace the carpets. Fuck this shit. We gotta go through all the rooms, all the layers of the onion, open all the doors, process them, bring in a new program. Let's clean up a bit, right? It's finally able to sift through all the bullshit regulate everything that needs to be regulated right all the paperwork that's on your desk is finally been filed now you're able to handle things with ease oh we got the new penske file not a problem um okay done what's next all right well that's it for the week okay we'll just chill out then but here's the thing when i bring up and i said there's really no limits to what this mind body space can do people right away they don't like to hear that too much because it gives them doubt. It's like, well, this is hogwash. Okay, that's nice. You know, that's like uh, wishful thinking helmet. But no, we got to get serious, really. So what are you saying? What do you, what happens then? What? So what does this not affect? Well, if you fall down the stairs and you break your arm, well, that's not that's not mind body, right? You got to go to the hospital. You got to get a cast, and you got to let it heal. But mind body could be the before and the afters, right? If you're regulated, you'll be able to heal efficiently, right? Quicker, right? Well, who knows? Why did you fall down the stairs? Maybe you got a little bit dizzy. Maybe you fucking, right? Because you're dealing with a survival state, right? If you were regulated, you might have never fallen down the stairs. Maybe you were more mentally clear and aware that maybe, you know. So that's some things okay, right? You break your, your leg go get it fixed but then you you can heal like a normal person efficiently doesn't get complicated right you get the best outcome of any situation using the mind body space and sure if you know you lost your leg or you had your gallbladder removed or you know in situations like that you can still use the mind body space to produce the best outcome in that situation all the complications that come with situations and like that, right? And that's just a small amount, right? Generally, that's maybe the 5% that's structural, that produce the complicated situations where you're like, yeah, but I, I'm missing my leg. What then, right? You can still use the mind-body space to introduce a program to produce the best outcome possible. 99% of all the diseases, syndromes, structural issues that people deal with can be reversed right your genes your your gene imprint can change also right there's no limits right and in those rare cases where it's you know you you're dealing with something that is very challenging you can still produce the best outcome in that situation and the thing is i try not to bring this up too much right i try not to cover the full spectrum of our reality, of things that we can heal ourselves from. Because if I do that, then anything that I talk about on the day-to-day -day will get dismissed, right? The important, real shit that can change your life. People will go, okay, this is hippie shit. Next, fuck this guy's delusional. Fuck, okay, everything he's saying, as far as I'm concerned, is bullshit. He's just probably making this up. He's probably, he's so fucking delusional. This is, this is like a slap in my face, sir. How did, this is really irresponsible for you to say, right? I'm sure I'll deal with, with some of that where people get upset and angry and or just dismiss anything I've said before because I've opened up the possibilities to almost everything. Right? 95, 90, 99% of things are now, it's game on now. When before people were like, okay, so is this, right? So I think this is where TMS, no, this is, I don't qualify. I don't qualify for this. That's too bad. Oh, fuck. Ah, ah. Right? No. No. That, you too. Right? 
you can benefit from this massively. You can fully recover. You can also recover. You're not a special fucking case, right? And people, when I tell people that, you know, this covers a big spectrum, they might not want to hear it because their brain will send them more doubt and go, see, that doesn't make sense. Show us the science. Where is this? Are you a doctor? Are you medically qualified to understand what we're really, are you, the, right? The doubt comes in, the OCD goes, nope. Let's move on. Let's go find something that's more real. Let's go find a guy that's, that's going to tell us to take supplements and that will improve maybe 20%. That's more realistic, right? That's realistic. That's, you know, this is where you give into the brainwashing. We've been brainwashed for so long to believe, you know, you might only feel a little bit better and then you'll take it because that's more believable. Please tell me to take five supplements and I'm going to feel 20% better. Because I believe that, and I'll fucking do it. Where, where is it? What's, what? Let me sign up. Where, how much do I pay? A thousand bucks? Let me do it. Right? They'd rather follow the, the protocol where you manage and feel maybe 10% better, but you're stuck for the rest of your life, than the actual route. Here, here's the answer. Here, here. You got to do some work. You got to change your beliefs. You got to change your core beliefs. Right? Because the brain is all over it. Right? Your survival programming and it's doing its job not your fault right it's going to be all over it and analyze it and go no there's danger all over this i perceive danger all over this because i'm not convinced and if i'm not convinced we got to find another mentality move that over no tell me something tell me something that you know give me a label that i can live with say yes you have this label but you'll be okay because you, you'll live another 20 years okay i can live with that Give me, give me some of that poison. That poison's good because I know my poison. I know my evil. It's better that I know my evil than to know an unknown thing that is telling, like, bullshit that I'm going to be free and fully thrive. Okay, that's hilarious. That's obviously hogwash, right? You know, it's wishful thinking, and I praise you, and I really think, you know, I, you have a good heart. You know, I'm not judging your character, Helmet, mindful guard. I'm not judging that, right? But you're going to have to wake up and smell the grapes because you know this is this is serious and you know for most of us there's there is no cure you don't understand there are no cures for most of us for the majority of the mind body it's bullshit right people need to be realistic and wake up take your fucking medications right and this is your new reality right you're stuck and that's just the way it is move on with your life right get go on disability you know, accept it. Accept the fucking reality. You're not going to get cured. You can't cure a lot of these things. You can't. Google. If you were to Google right now, it will say it's not curable. See? See? Right? You're giving people false hope. That's horrible. That's evil. If I were to list all the 70 symptoms, and if we were to go and we were to go down all these rabbit holes and, you know, research them all, I guarantee you 99% of them, right if you were to google them will say that there is no cure and you're stuck with this and there's medications that help you manage your support right and then you get the labels and you get the belief systems and then you're stuck you're running a program of of a reality right you, your your beliefs become that program right of a stuck chronic illness right and manage you're managing this illness right and you know what half of the times when people say, you know, you can't, it's not, you can't cure that, sir. So right away, I know you're full of shit. And then when you, when you tell them, I got to tell you something, there's nothing to cure, right? That throws them back and they, and they go, is he living in a different dimension? There's nothing to cure. Oh my God. Explain that to my symptoms when I have that smell and I'm fucking, I'm losing my, I have that. Explain that to my rash. Explain that to my bloody diarrhea when I eat a little niblet of a tomato. Explain that to me. Can you explain it to me? And can, you, can you look at my diarrhea and go, right, can you tell me that it's, there's nothing to cure? There's nothing to cure. Hi, peanut. Hi, piece of corn. There's nothing to cure. Oh, they get triggered when you tell them that. And it's true. Seven times out of ten, there's nothing to cure. It's just a program that you got to change. So the body can do what it's designed to do. And we shouldn't stop trying to micromanage the body and all our systems in our body and our mind. It knows what to do. It knows how to create, you know, trying to 
micromanage if it's creating neural pathways is just a waste of your time, right? Right, we're, we're being a, a micromanaging, a, a Karen that micromanages. Okay, so, all right, neural pathway. Okay, let's let's hurry it up with, a little bit with that because uh, we have to read, no, stop, redirect, no, okay. Um, I hope I created a neural pathway. I, it's feeling kind of fat. It's feeling kind of girthy. Yeah, it's there. Um, I think it's there. Oh my God, because I noticed that my thought is changing a bit and I'm starting to notice that, that symptom. It's on the new highway. Okay, neural pathway on on it's all irrelevant because at the end of the day your brain knows what to do it knows how to create neural pathways your liver knows what to do your kidneys know what to do your biome will get into balance it knows how to do it your gut knows how to fix itself you don't need to sit there and micromanage it with a microscope and get all these tests and labs done and bomb it with with all these probiotics because you think you know what's best for your gut you have no fucking idea and so, and neither do all these supplement companies. They have no fucking idea. They don't even have a close of a clue. And you're going to allow that to enter your body? Fuck that. You're better off realigning your alarm system, resetting it, bringing down your baseline. Right? Turning off your alarms, emptying your fucking loads. You know, this is how you can support your body and your mind. Right? reprogram your OCD, your, your, your alarms, turn them off so that you can walk away, step back and let your body do it because it knows how to do it. It knows how to balance itself out when you give it the opportunity by supporting it the right way. That's how you can support it by letting it do its job, right? When you, when you have a vehicle and its engine, if, it, if you change the oil, right? And you let it do its job, it's going to run e efficiently. You're not going to get in there and the, put your hand in the engine and go, okay, I think this carburetor is not working. I'm going to work it for it. You're not, you know, you're not going to step back and go, oh, it's doing everything. Everything, I got heat in the car. Everything's working perfectly. Right? And that's how your body is. It knows how to work. It doesn't need you fucking get, get the fuck out of the way, man. Allow it to do its shit. And if you want to do something, right, this is this is where you come in. Change the program. Empty the loads. Bring down your baseline. And turn off alarms. That takes a lot of work. I'll give you that. It's a shit. It's fucking hard. I'm telling you. The whole the, the process, the, the journey is exorcisms every fucking day. It's fucking hard. It's the hardest thing you'll ever do. So does that give you a little bit more confidence that maybe this shit has something to it? Maybe the, it, the, the mind-body space is the answer. Because I'm telling you, it's the hardest thing you ever fucking do. And that might, that might tell your amygdala, okay, maybe he's onto something. Maybe I believe this. Because he says it's hard. It's the fucking hardest thing I'll ever do. And it's the root. Okay, I can, I can, I can take that. So how hard is it? Fucking hard. Brutal. It sucks. Then I, I can't do it. It's, that sounds too hard. It is hard. Not many people do it, honestly. Oh, maybe I'm going to do I, I, You know what? You're, you're, you're feeding me a little bit of a doubt. And I need that. I like that. So I'm going to do it. But here's the thing. Yes, it's hard. But as long as you stick with it, you're guaranteed to go through it and finish. Go to the finish line and cut that ribbon. So you're saying it's a shit show through the whole process. It fucking sucks. But as long as I keep going and I get up and I keep pushing, they'll get to the finish line. The brain has no choice but to change. Yes, that's what I'm saying. As long as you stick with it, you're going to fail many, many times. But you need to fail many, many times to gain that leverage and that experience to move forward to build those neural pathways. Okay, Helmet, I've been doing this a, a month, and it's been getting worse. Oh, my God, it's been getting worse. That's your evidence. You're on the right track. You're doing it. Okay, I'm intrigued, and I like the fact that this is hard because it's telling my brain, it's feeding that doubt that maybe this is this is the route. But then you get the people that when it becomes too hard, they quit because they think 
it's this well this must be wrong because I'm getting I'm getting worse but when you open doors and you expose yourself to an old program the brain perceives danger and when it perceives danger it sends alarms do you think alarms are going to feel good no their job is to get your attention it's going to throw you your biggest nightmares and the biggest symptoms so you feel the alarm throughout your body and your mind and your soul that's its job so in order to feel the new program, which is <sighs> right before, before you feel that you have to still feel the old program. It's a transition, right? It's ew, ew, yum, yum, right? You're, you're, you're crossing that bridge of, oh, fuck, there's shit everywhere. Oh, I'm sliding everywhere. This sucks. I hate this. This this side of the bridge is both. This whole world and this side is shit. Oh, I feel like, but look at, oh my goodness. Look, it's all clean here. It's beautiful. All organized. It's, what a happy place. Wow, the sunshine. Oh my God. Ding, ding. I'm so happy. I'm thriving. I'm healthy. Oh my goodness. Right? But you have to go cross that bridge and you're going to feel like shit. So, just because you're dealing with structural damage or tissue damage or any sort of real, you know, it's all real. It's a, it all depends on the spectrum, how severe you're, you're going through the spectrum and not your symptoms. All the, all the symptoms are real, right? Just because there's inflammation, damage, lab reports, labels, it doesn't mean anything. All this stuff can be temporary. It's all up to you. You make the choice. At the end of the day, disease is a choice. And some people might not like to hear that. But it's your beliefs. And if you're willing to stick to it and work on it, just turn those alarms off. It's hard, I know. Bring down the baseline, empty the, the loads. And you can also get freedom again and thrive.